Okay, so Seba, you you get the manuscript. You're saying, my God, I, I shouldn't do this, but I must do this. I love it. Do you love it as is? Do you request some revisions? What, what, what happens next for the manuscript? Pretty much, and correct me if I'm wrong, because that entire year is a blur for me, uh, pregnancy hormones. But I, I pretty much remember loving it as it was and just having some tweaks and suggestions to certain scenes, some like tightening stuff. It wasn't major. I really thought it was pretty much almost there. Um, and it's interesting, you know, talking about you mentioning that, you know, it could have been vampire, it could have been zombie. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm so glad it wasn't because I don't, I mean, you know, I have enjoyed the occasional vampire or zombie novel, but it is not my cup of tea in general. And I would have not been as excited if it wasn't a ghost story. And I remember during our call, I mentioned that it was, it, it reminded me of Kenneth Opel's The Nest. And he said, oh my gosh, I love that book. And I was like, really? And that was a really great moment of connection because I had read that book a few months earlier and it was me trying to broaden my literary horizons because I'm not a big speculative reader or genre horror at all. And, and an editor actually recommended The Nest to me saying, you know, it's actually not, I mean, it is horror, but it's, it's not horror in the way you would imagine. Like it's not goosebumps or anything. And I was like, okay. So I read it and it blew my mind. And I remember thinking as soon as I finished that book, I would kill to have a book that gave me those vibes. And so when I was reading um, Too Bright to See, I was thinking of that novel and thinking, this is it, this is that book. And it added to my incredible, you know, um, like I was terrified that <laughs> I liked it that much. Like it was that feeling, you know, it's just, sometimes you like a book so much that, you know, if you lost it, it would just be really hard, you know? And I think that was definitely a book for me. Like that book was definitely one for me. And so, I'm really glad it was a ghost story and it was it was similar to a book that I'd already read in some ways that I brought up in our call. And so, yeah, I mean, I just, back to your question, I didn't think it needed an overhaul at all. And this is not to say that that doesn't happen. It does often happen. I do offer on books that I think needed quite a significant plot redevelopment. Um, for me, it's more about, do I have that vision? Do I, am I clear on what needs to be changed? Um, and not how much needs to be changed. Sometimes I know a book needs to be changed in a pretty significant way, but if I know how to advise an author to do that, I'll still make that offer. Um, but in this case, I didn't think it needed to be changed that much and it worked. I, I think he agreed, which is great. <laughs> so then you go back and forth, one round, two rounds, three rounds. I think it was one round, right? I think so. And like, yeah, I don't, I don't even remember what edits you asked for. I know that they were relatively minor. Yeah. It was very much like, you know, cross your T's and, you know, like dot your I's. There were certain scenes I thought, okay, this scene is feeling like you should add something more. Like, I think we had a conversation about a scene towards the end where I was like, maybe you should amp this vibe up. I'm trying not to be spoilery here, <laughs> but like, you know, maybe you should amp up this particular theme here and show me, um, you'll see when all of you definitely read the novel, esteemed audience, that, you know, there are lots of mirror scenes and I was like, okay, so what are we doing with this right now? There's, are you, is this conscious? Is this a theme you want to develop? If so, then I think this particular scene where Bugs looking at a mirror, I want this to be a little bit like, oh, this is the culmination of this theme. I remember having that thought and you're like, oh yeah, I think that makes sense. So like that was kind of like edit notes like that, that were very sort of like, kind of tighten things, beef it up, like make what's already here, like the raw material was all there. I just kind of suggested that certain moments be amplified or perhaps, um, you know, just brought out more clearly, I think it was one of those edits, which was also great because then I didn't have to give a long overall editorial letter just before I went on maternity leave. <laughs> so I was thinking that too. I thought, I think perhaps, I actually, you know, I'll never know, but if it was, if, if I thought it had required too much of an overhaul of an edit, I might not have even offered or because I, I wouldn't have time. Like I just didn't have time. <laughs> it was really, really just, I was, I remember reading the manuscript, running over because I had to throw up, then coming back <laughs> because I was just, I was sick. It was a really tough pregnancy. I was, and I was just like, no, I, I, I want to work. Am I? And then I'm thinking to myself, wait, am I working too hard? Should I be working right now? I don't know if I should be working right now. Is this good? Am I being ambitious or am I being, or is this making it harder for all women? Like, you know, like, <laughs> it was 
just a lot going on in my head. Um, but yeah, I think I think overall it didn't need a big overhaul edit letter. So I'm glad, and I'm glad that more than that, I'm glad that my suggestions resonated with Kyle. So 